Hi to everyone around the globe. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, thanks for joining and spending your valuable time with me today in this webinar. Today, I'm going to cover uh, the topic of using frameworks to define problem space. And this is like uh, a segue into the previous topics that I've done earlier in this in the webinar of Park School. I have done about roadmaps. I've also done uh, about uh, product uh, discovery techniques. And those things are mostly like strategic and, and looking at discovery techniques is, is really understanding the discovery process and what are the possible techniques. And today it's like I'm focusing on the defining problem space. Uh, this is the most wanted topic. If either you work with UX, you don't work with UX. Either way, this will be extremely helpful because I'm imagining that uh, all the product managers or to be product managers are going to juggle or juggling with a lot of tasks in a day, uh, meeting people, knowing things, discovering new things, hearing feedbacks, continuously sort of giving, uh, uh, getting uh, user feedback, satisfaction, uh, new requests coming in. A lot of things is happening in your day-to-day -day life. And imagine that you have to deal with a lot of product, product uh, improvements, developments, or optimizations on a on an ongoing basis in a large scale. And you're like, okay, I have like 25 things here on my table, and I have to deliver all of this, and I don't even know which one is is creating the maximum value. So to really maximize your product value, this frameworks will be helpful to identify of those of those 25 or 40 things, what's really valuable for you to prioritize. Or I'm not talking about prioritization techniques, but really looking at, okay, is this a problem you want to solve? So I want to be careful with the terminologies I use because this is purely to understand you have a lot going on in your product. What is really the value you're delivering? Can you differentiate when some request comes in, whether it's a problem versus something you know they can they can just tolerate without without that development being done in your product. So yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to cover. We are not doctors; we are product managers looking at things holistically. So, so this is a very basic thing. You have twenty five things on your table. You want to know how it creates value. Just take a paper and a pen. Write down the problem statement. If that has come as a solution from your stakeholder already that they have thought through, just ask them what is the problem they are trying to solve. Where is this coming from? And then sort of create a hypothesis what this will possibly solve. Uh, if they don't have an answer, what that solves for the users in a larger scale of uh, user groups, if they are not aware, they just know that many users are complaining about that. Maybe make a hypothesis that this, this will solve the problem from A to B, and the value is going to be A to B. And also try to understand this valuable is only to the customers or also to the to the organization that you're working with, the company, the brand, the product. What does it really help? So try to map out what the value is for the organization. And what would be typical action points that you would take? Just launching a product, less launching a feature does not make your change success successful. So you really need to understand, is there like a marketing strategy that you have to go along with? Do you need to tell your salespeople to communicate this out to your users so they can start using? Do you need to work with uh, internal stakeholders to talk to their users to uh, make changes in the way they are working to adopt this. So really understand the change management process piece as well. So you know that when you make this feature change, that's really going to go along with other uh, schemas attached to it. And the adoption prediction, that's very true because as I mentioned, if the change management transition part is not thought through, what could happen is you could have a feature hanging there and then you could find out that they wanted it, but they didn't have the capacity to use it for some reason, or they had a different change of thought process. So you did not really sort of predict what the future is going to be like, and then take that into consideration for your uh, for your feature. So, and next one you need to think is how do we measure this? So uh, that, that's truly important. If you don't define your KPIs, what you're going after, then, then how can you know whether you're successful or not? This is really to understand that. So just take a paper, those 25 pieces of 
things that you wanted to deliver now is in this format ready. Now you have everything on your wall or you have it on your mirror board or, or any other tool that you're using uh, to list out all of these things. Now you're like, oh, I have all of these things. I don't even know where I sh should be spending my time. What will be really be useful? So Cano analysis really helps in that. You have 25 items. You, you sort of understand uh, what you want to deliver. Um, I would, what I would do is I would ask, I, I would make my stakeholders or my user groups or users actually sit in the room. I would be like all these 25 things that they want. I would frame it in a question format. Like, how would you feel, uh, if you have a reference point to this feature or function, like referring, referring to this reports, how would you feel if you have this, they can say. I, I would love to have it. I like it. I, I really, ex or they would say like, I expect to have it. You know, I, I, I totally dislike it. Or it can be anything. They can say that, you know, and you say that, how do you feel you want to have it? They could come with one of those reactions. And you can also ask them, how would you feel if you don't have that in the product? Can you, you know, how, what would you do? And they would be like, hey, um, you know, I can work around it. It's okay. I have a neutral feeling to it. Or they could say like, yeah, I, I, it's a complex workaround, you know, but I can, you know, I can manage for a period of time. It's sort of tolerate. Or they could be like, you know, this will frustrate me where I would leave my job and I would, you know, or I would leave your product and then I would do something else because I, this, this is not helping me. This, this could be possibly some reactions. So asking the same question on a positive side and a negative side would give you like a sort of a matrix where you can make when when they say that hey if it's not fulfilled yeah i could still tolerate it you know and and when when it's sort of like uh, when you ask them hey like how would you feel that uh, it's not um, you know that's something you want to have then they say they yeah I, I would, you know, I expect it to have, then it's sort of like a customer delighter. So you really sort of map it out across this matrix. And then you see where the actual value lies is when they say that they dislike it in either way, whether they have it and, and, uh, and uh, uh, they dislike it when they don't have it. And then when they say that they love it, when they actually have it that's that's the area that you want to go behind and that's the actual value where it lies so you you can use this framework to really sort of play with it and see where that is in the matrix and and really sort of you know place those 25 things across these matrix and be like hey now i found the where the product value lies now i have something i can do and this is one form format or framework of, of actually analyzing it the other framework is basically like persona, the empathy map, the persona document. So why do we need to do this? If you go back historically 15 years or 20 years back, we didn't have any digitalization. We didn't have digital platforms. We had everything sort of uh, happening on the um, uh, in person. So we knew what they was going in the life. When somebody changed, we tried to understand why they are working with us, why do they like our products, why do they like our services. There was a personal connection. And when this digitalization happened, we sort of like focused more on digital technologies, giving the things to our customers, somewhere that human connection is lost. What if the person behind that screen has changed? What if, what if that person's motivation has changed? What that person's ambition has changed? We have not considered any of those. We are just giving, 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 giving without knowing any of these three things. So this will really help us to understand where we are focusing our energies. We have to understand their motivation. We have to understand where they see themselves in five years down the line when they are using our products. And we also need to understand how they feel about it. Uh, are they feeling happy? Are they feeling negative? I think that's the most valuable thing. So this will really help you in identifying some of those benefits and putting it in there and sort of mapping that to your 25 items that you have and you hear the user input about that. The next thing is jobs to be done. So the jobs to be done discovery frameworks is not something I'm talking about today. I'm talking about really sort of mapping out your 25 items into like what is the what is 
like the thing that you want to go behind. So in that, imagine that you have the 25 items, the problem statement that you define. Now let's go on the value that you're delivering, which means that you could say, for example, like by launching this new wish list, I, I am going to, uh, you know, have all of these users interact with this feature and they would basically ultimately convert into a uh, potential buyer for this product. So this is an actual outcome. When you write this outcome, uh, the, the stakeholders or the users could say how important it is to them. And the satisfaction is something different. Satisfaction is they can say like, hey, you give me or you, you don't give me, I could be satisfied, I could remain satisfied, or I, my satisfaction increases, my satisfaction decreases, it can happen in various ways. So you give this 25 items as a value deliverable, and you rate the, the importance is already defined by your business stakeholders in some way, they have that in their mind, but it's really a good activity where you give this out to your stakeholder group or your user groups to really sort of put it in their point of view, what the importance is and what the satisfaction would be by doing that. And you would see this template will help you or this framework will help you where in the importance scale and somebody says like, hey, this is highly important to me, but and the satisfaction is like uh, really low, that's an opportunity. On the other side, if they are saying the satis importance is very high, but the satisfaction is also high irrespective of that, you need to ask the tough question of why do you want to do it? And sometimes they may say that the importance is like, it could also be here, high, low, medium. They could say that, hey, this is very important, but then, you know, the satisfaction is really high already. Then I would say like, hey, this is not something that's going to deliver the highest product value. I know that, that that's going to deliver a value, but do I want to do that now? No, there are better things for me to do. So in the 25 things, this is the excellent way to sort of prioritize. So you can try this out. Another one is the battle cards. This is helpful, especially when you have like 25 items, you know, the features, you know, the advantage, you know, the benefits that you're going to deliver to the business. You're going to uh, have the value of the customer uh, taken into account. And if you want to compare it to your competitors or compare it to your past experience, sort of have that. And then questions to ask is like more, more on the feasibility and scalability, what you really want to do. So this will really help you in sort of understanding, are you going to deliver that value in the end or not? Because you're always focusing on like, okay, I have this done. I'm going to deliver. I'm going to ship this. This is better than my competitor. Great. But are you serving, are you, are you serving the right customers? Are, are you serving the right user groups? Are you targeting the right people? An excellent uh, uh, example is in my, in my previous company or in my previous job experience that I worked in an education technology site. Uh, we wanted to do something like a marketing campaign for some users who are using our content to read books. And uh, we were like, hey, like, let's do this. Let's launch this marketing content in the in the website where they are reading this content and stuff. And when we really did a complete thorough research, what we found out is the readers are always not your buyers. Their parents can buy, their friends can buy, anybody can buy for them. And these buyers are, are accessing the same content in a different way, the, the marketing content in a different way. So it turned out to be that, that the campaign could not be accommodated in devices like phones or, or, uh, or iPads. It was only more like web friendly and, and it was happening on the website where actually people read and they don't care because they are not going to be your buyer. So where you wanted to launch that product marketing content or campaign was on, on a different location where these buyers exist. So this was a very good research and an understanding when we when we completely think through end to end and we, when we ask the questions, will this be something that people will consume at the end? or will they adopt it at the end, then you find the answer is no, then you really need to start digging the value-based delivery that you want to do. So this can be helpful either for your, for your product one-on-one -on -one or in against your competitors. So yeah, so this, this could be valuable. And all of these frameworks are, are truly helpful if you have an understanding of your product 
and as i stated are already like a high level sort of a you call it a prd the product requirement documentation or your high level understanding of what the product uh, deliverable is or initiative is capability is i, I it, it is termed in so many different ways but, but the idea is you need to have an idea and you need to have a goal strategy kpi uh, value to the customer value to the business and then these frameworks really sort of help you understand when you have so many things happening around you around the world like things like disruptive things like chat gpt and stuff like that so how can you prioritize disruptive stuff new stuff uh, old stuff happening stuff everything across in one board so that's what this frameworks will help you so that's it so thank thank you for being here today and uh, that were the this was a short session, but I hope really helpful where uh, you could get like frameworks to understand how you could really under uh, really define your problem space for your product and value based delivery for your product. And if you do have further questions, please feel free to ask me anything. And here is my uh, LinkedIn uh, details and let's speak about what we have discussed. And thanks for joining today and for your time. Bye bye.